All right, so our next animation is going to be this one, which is basically a MacBook animation. So I'm just going to play it. And <clears throat> so this one's pretty straightforward. It's just um, a MacBook placed on a box sort of thing uh, with white background and white lighting. And we're going to learn how to do that. Um, it was actually pretty fun to make uh, and pretty easy to make, honestly. Like this is probably easier than the previous ones because uh, I don't know, the animation is just like relatively... Uh, straightforward let's go ahead and get started the first thing we're going to need obviously is going to be a macbook model you can model it yourself but i found this amazing model on uh, sketchfab so what you can do is you can just go to sketchfab.com and search for macbook and click downloadable um and then you can just search for models uh look for look for different models um if you uh if you see this download the this download icon it means the model is free if you see this dollar sign icon that means it is paid. So you can just decide accordingly. I'm going to go with the free model, which is going to be this one right here. Uh, MacBook, Apple MacBook Air 15, uh, Space Gray 2023. You can just search for this exact name if you want this exact model. But let me show you where it was. So it was right here. It was this one. So you can just download this model and follow along. I also found this MacBook Pro 14 inch model. So you can also download this if you want. This is a pretty good model as well. <clears throat> And it's free. So let's go ahead and download this. So if I download, um, if I click download, you're going to see that we don't have FPX or blend format. Uh, so I'm going to be going with GITF this time. Uh, GITF is probably one of my favorite uh, formats after, what do you call it, um, FPX. Because uh, like you can easily import it inside of Blender 3D. So I've already downloaded it. And once you download it, you're going to open a zip file. And it's going to look something like this. So what we can do is we can just simply drag this out on our desktop. But before that, let me just create a new folder because I'm trying to be more organized with my stuff because I used to be like, I used to have like a lot of stuff on my desktop, but lately I've been trying to, you know, be a little more organized, <laughs> but yeah. So we have all our stuff here. Let's go to Blender and create a new file. Select everything, delete and press Control S to um, basically save the project macbook underscore course perfect so now we can just save blender file now we can go to file import and then click gitf so glb slash gitf and then you can go to desktop and macbook air and scene.gitf you could just you can just import this and it should hopefully just import it like that perfect now the good thing about this model is that this model has everything separate basically all the sort of um parts are separate which is really handy because we are going to be basically um separating the lid and the body because obviously we are going to be controlling those right so um the lid is going to be opening and stuff like that so what i'm going to do is that we can just uh basically separate everything so let me just delete this collection and let me rename this model to macbook okay um has a lot of these parent objects and stuff like that uh but what we're, what we're going to be doing is that we are simply going to be um selecting separate objects and then just grouping them so just like one of these objects right hold shift on your keyboard and then keep selecting all of them and now this is going to be a little bit of it's going to involve a little bit of eyeballing so and once you think you have selected all the objects what you can do is you can press G and try to move them and then you'll realize what you haven't selected. So there's an object which is inside this. So I'm going to be going inside this and then selecting it there like that. G, move it. I'm going to place it there for a bit just so I can like zoom in and see if I left anything. So yeah, I did leave this tiny part. Um, I think it's from the camera. Another thing which you can do uh, if you want to sort of not do this all this hard work um is you can just simply go to right click oh sorry go to right the view from the right side and then what you can do is you can just press alt z to go into um what do you call this to go into x-ray mode you can also click this thing right here this thing to go into x-ray mode and while you're in there you can just select everything like select this part right here oops not this part up till here so that it only selects the objects which are over there and now you can see that if I move it, you're going to see that it's basically all the objects. And let me try to rotate this. So right now the problem is that the uh, the center of sort of the origin of the rotation or the pivot of the rotation is not correct. So we're going to have to fix that in just a bit. 
So with all these objects selected, what I can do is I can just press Control J. Control J, what that is going to do is that it's going to uh, merge all the objects into one object. But before that, you're going to make sure that none of the none of the objects that you add have a modifier on them, right? So none of them do have a modifier. So press Control J. And sometimes it does mess up the geometry a little bit. So what I usually like to do is I usually like to just undo and just keep grouping them again and again and just look look at the edges to just to make sure nothing has been messed up. Yeah, so I don't think that any of the mesh is going to be messed up. Okay, perfect. So this whole thing is now just one mesh, right? We can right click this. Actually, not right click. We can just press Alt P and we can just say clear parent and keep transformation. So this is going to basically just get rid of all the parents and everything. And it's just going to give you this one object, which is going to be the lid, right? So we can just double click this and call it lid. Okay. Now what we can do is we can basically press A to select everything in our scene, right? Because um, everything is basically just this MacBook. We don't have anything else. Then we can shift click this uh, lid to basically get rid of the lid. That means that everything other than the lid is going to be the body, right? With everything selected, you can just press Control J. Oops, okay, we can't. Um, the reason for that is because we have a lot of these groups. So we can just press Alt P, clear parent and clear parent and keep transform. And with all that selected, uh, we can now just press Control J. Okay, still doesn't work. So actually, I don't, I don't even think I don't think we even need to make this one object. So what we're going to be doing is that we're just going to be adding all this to just one collection, right click, uh, new collection, and just drop all of this into this collection and close it. This is going to be the body. Perfect. So that is going to be pretty good. Um, I don't know. Why, I don't know why I was trying to group this. Uh, I, I was trying to join this. We don't really need to join this. The only thing that we needed to join was this right because obviously we're gonna have to move this so for this we do need to join it and let's go to right select right right view mode and let's set the origin point to be the correct one because if i rotate it right now you're going to see that it's not rotating correctly so let's click this button right here which is going to be the cursor so it's going to set the cursor to any point you want zoom into this hinge and just set it um try try your best to set it to the center point of this hinge and i think this looks like the center point Yeah, I think this is the center point. Um, you obviously don't have to be exactly correct, but try to be as correct as possible. So with this selected, with this, um, basically with this cur cursor point set, go back to your selection mode. And now what you can do is you can just go to object up there, make sure your lid is selected. Go to object, set origin, and just set origin to 3D cursor. Now it's gonna, you're gonna see that your origin is gonna be, uh, your cursor, your sort of rotation point is gonna be set to the cursor. Now if I go to my right view mode and rotate it, like that, you're gonna see that it's gonna rotate perfectly. You can see if I go here, perfect. And there's something poking out here. We're gonna fix that in just a bit. And if I go ahead, you're gonna see that it is almost perfect. The only problem is if I move this, you're gonna see that there's a little bit of, a, little, a small part of the hinge, which is not joined, which we should have joined, but we didn't, these two parts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of these by holding shift. Try to move them to make sure that they're the only parts there. Yep. So now let's select those objects which were not selected. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go back here. Let's move this up for a bit so we can like see where the objects are. So it's these two objects, right? Um, with both of them selected, I'm just going to actually, I can't do that. So I'm going to control Z to make it, uh, make sure that it's in the right position. And now I can sort of go inside and look inside this and I can select those two objects. I think it was this one and it was this object right there let's move it oops not not that one so i think it's this this thing right here so now if i i think i've selected both of them so with both of them selected i can shift select the lid try to move it to see everything is selected it is and now i can just press ctrl j again just to add those objects to sort of um the group right make sure there is no artifacts or anything like that and now what i can do is with the lid selected i can rotate it and you're going to see that it's going to rotate just perfectly. Take a look at the back. It's perfect. And take a look at the front. That is also perfect. It obviously needs to be rotated a little more. Make sure to rotate it in the X axis because if you rotate it in any other axis, it's going to be messed up. 
Perfect. So this is going to be our starting point. This is going to be where the sort of um, the MacBook starts, right? Then it's going to slowly open. So what we can what we can do is we can just go ahead and uh, sort of just make that little animation because it's pretty simple. So be sure you're on the make sure you're on the first frame in the timeline, and you can just select your lid and press I, and just set a location, rotation, and scale keyframe. Go ahead, do something like frame number two forty. Or, or any frame like which is pretty far away press r z and then just open it like that so i think that should be our final position add a keyframe there and now you're gonna see that it's gonna slowly open okay i don't think we need to make this linear usually i make all my animations linear but i think this one looks good because it sort of um slows down when it when it opens, it's not the, it's not like very sharp. The movement is not very sharp, so that's good. That's what we want. And so we're essentially done with the animation of the MacBook. It's that simple. Um, now what we can do is we can just go ahead and start working on I think the lighting, because I think most of the textures are already done. Let me go to rendered mode, and let's just check out the textures first. Then we can start working on the right lighting. So let's set the render engine to cycles, GPU compute, and. You can see that pretty much all the textures are already completed for us. We might need to make some tweaks, but I'm not going to have a separate section just for the textures because they're pretty much already done. Um, I am going to just start. Uh, let, let's just go ahead and start working on the lighting. All right, so for the lighting, what we're going to be doing is that firstly, let me just separate my, let me create a new viewport so that we can sort of make changes in one and look at our render from the other. Um, and let me actually add a camera as well. So camera, go inside the camera, and then we can lock it. Let me zoom in first and then lock it to view. Let me first set it to 2000 by 2000. And then we can just sort of change it. Let me set this, set the view to something like this. Like our, what do you call it? Yeah, so I, I want to look at the camera from, I want to look at the scene from this perspective and let me actually set the render region as well zoom in and now we can just go ahead and start working on the lighting okay so for the lighting what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be clicking add you can just click add and then obviously area light okay scale it down a little bit g z a uh, g shift z and we can rotate it in the y-axis oops rotate in the y-axis 90 degrees and rotate it in the z-axis 180 degrees just like that and one thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the, uh, the, to the world properties and set the color to zero, uh, to color to black, basically, not zero. Um, you can also set it to white, but the thing is that adds a lot of sort of uh, lighting to the scene, which we don't want. So I don't want that right now, at least. I want it to be black for now um, so that I can sort of light it properly first. Then we can change the background and stuff like that. Let me turn off the guides for now as well. Okay, so I usually like to start with the rim lights as you guys already know so that should be a good rim light another rim light should be at the back like that and then just duplicate this bring it to the front this okay this can be the fill light scale it up um scale it down in the x-axis but then move it up like that and then the key light should be somewhere like here now the thing about this render is that this render is going to be slightly different. Uh, this animation is going to be slightly different in, uh, I mean, in in terms of lighting, because we're not going to have like a proper key light and proper everything, because um, we're looking at it, we're looking at it from all angles, right? So how do you decide which one's the key light, which one's the fill light? So all angles should look good. That's why we're not going to be doing the three point lighting setup as much. We're not going to be using that setup. One thing which I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be making the body of this darker. I think it's too bright for now. So I like the I like darker colors better, so I think something like that should be a good color. Or actually never mind. I'm I'm actually just going to keep this. We can just tweak the lighting based off of that. So um let me actually get rid of one of these lights cuz it's too bright. Like like the lighting is too much and go back to our scene. I think it looks pretty good the lighting and we can sort of look at it from all angles. 
it looks pretty flat right now so i'm going to go to my render properties go down to color management and set the look to high contrast much better okay and so perfect go here let's see if it looks good from all angles yeah i think it looks pretty decent from pretty much all angles next thing is going to be uh let me actually make the background white so the way you do that is by either just going to your word properties and just setting your background to white but the problem with that is going to be that it's going to add a lot of like extra lights which you're not going to need right because obviously uh the background is also going to be lighting your scene it's not just the background it's also lighting your scene another option is going to be to basically set the background color back to black and hey guys um thank you for watching the free preview of this course and unfortunately the rest of the course is actually paid it's on udemy but i'm just going to be showing you what we're going to be learning in the course and why i think it's definitely worth buying right um so the first render we're going to be making is going to be this perfume render right there right we're going to be doing everything from scratch um uh, and then we're going to be making an animation of the scene right so we're going to be making this animation right here so you can see that uh it's actually a very, very realistic animation and you could like easily get clients for this sort of this type of stuff um, if you add this to your resume or to your portfolio, right? Then we're going to be making another variation of this perfume. So this is going to be in a different lighting setup. Um, and I think this looks a lot more realistic and it's something which brands can maybe post on their social media and stuff like that or website. Um, and I think this this stuff is like in very in demand right now. And I think you should definitely sort of learn this skill. Um, and then we're going to be making an animation of a Rolex watch. Now, again, you can apply the skills learned in this and create um, watch animations or any sort of product animations for brands. And you could definitely make a lot of money off of that. So I think um, this course is definitely going to be worth it for you in terms of the skills that you're going to be learning. You can, um, if let's say you invest like $10, $15 in this course, um, you can definitely get products, uh, projects which are going to be worth more than like $500, $1,000 um, easily. And then we're going to be making this MacBook animation right here. Um, so if you're making, if you're into making like tech product animations um, and tech product review videos, then this is definitely for you. And I think you should definitely um, take this course because I think this skill, uh, making these sort of videos is pretty in demand. And I actually get a lot of uh, messages from people who want to, who are like starting their own brands and they want like videos uh, made for this. So I think this is definitely something, uh, it's definitely a skill which you should add to your um, what do you call it? Your arsenal, right? So yeah, that's essentially what we're going to be covering in this course. And I think for the price that you're getting this course for, I think it's definitely worth it. And I think you should definitely consider it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.